Chris Stokes. Chris Stokes is next on the chopping block. The mogul slash wannabe rapper wants some of the pressure off of him, so is dropping names of other predators. First up is the record executive from the South and his group. The group's victims include a Y2K boy band and one of Ariana Grande's love rivals and her sister. Okay, so here's a twist that we probably never saw coming in this whole Diddy drama because word on the streets is that he is now making plans to do a swap and get somebody else in his place. I mean, when you stop to think about it, it's not all that surprising because the alternative would be him losing his career and possibly going to jail. And if there's one thing that we know about Mr. Diddy, it's that he is super desperate to not go to jail and keep his billion dollar net worth. And if you're wondering who Diddy might be offering up as a sacrificial lamb, it's none other than Chris Stone his longtime friend and collaborator. Well, Chris is not about to go down easy like that because he is now slamming Diddy and threatening to expose even more secrets. Y'all better hold on tight because this drama just got real. Diddy has been hit with a third lawsuit for assault, trafficking, and revenge corn. And according to this new blind item, he is planning on bringing people down around him to get some of the heat off of him. Again, now it shouldn't be all that surprising that Diddy is trying to do all that he can to get away with this because he has been in a lot of trouble and getting a lot of negative press in these past couple of weeks. Cassie basically opened a whole can of worms with her lawsuit where she said that Diddy has aid Miss Ventura in her own home after she tried to leave him, often punched, kicked, and stumped on Miss Ventura, resulting in burst lips, black eyes, and blue forced Miss Ventura to engage in intimate acts with male SWs while getting off on it and filming the encounters, demanded that Miss Ventura to carry his firearm in her purse just to make her feel uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is, and introduced Miss Ventura to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse required her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions. She also revealed how he used to SA her and force feed her drugs, saying, Mr. Combs always supplied Miss Ventura with copious amounts of drugs before and during the FOs. Miss Ventura was given FD, cocaine, GHD, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol in excessive amounts during FOs, which allowed her to disassociate during these horrific encounters. It became commonplace to get IV fluids in the days after an FO to recover from excessive substances pushed upon her. Apart from the horrible things that Diddy did to her, the lawsuit also revealed how he treated other people, like the time he allegedly blew up Kid Cudi's car, or the time he allegedly tried to unalive Suge Knight. The court document says, for example, on one occasion, Mr. Combs and Miss Ventura were using drugs together in his home. One of his security staff barged in and announced that Suge Knight, a longtime rival of Mr. Combs, was spotted at Mel's drive-in diner in Los Angeles. Mr. Combs began to get dressed, retrieved multiple guns from his safe, and ran out of his home to where he believed Mr. Knight was dining. So Cassie's lawsuit alleged that Diddy S ate her, put hands on her, pimped her out to other men, forced her to take drugs, and tried to unalive Suge Knight. That was very bad. But then more and more lawsuits started to come up, alleging that Diddy also essayed them. But the lawsuits were brought on by Joey Dickerson Neal and a woman who goes by Jane Doe. They both claimed that Diddy SA'd them in the 90s when he was on the rise of his career. According to Joey, Diddy allegedly drew her, SA'd her, and recorded it without her knowledge when she was a college student in 1991. But complaint alleges Combs intentionally drew Dickerson nil, leaving her unable to stand or walk. The suit said she left her drink unattended with him at a restaurant, and afterward, under alleged pressure from Combs, she took a hit from a blunt. They then drove to a music studio, the suit stated. When Dickerson nil couldn't exit the car, Combs allegedly took her to a place he was staying to SA her, according to the filing. Even worse, she revealed in the lawsuit that Diddy had made a video of him essaying her, and he shared it around. Reports have it that days later, a male friend named Devante Swing, a member of the popular 90s R&B B group Jodeci revealed to Joey that he viewed an adult tape along with other people. According to the suit, Joey said Swing feared his band would lose its record deal if he spoke against Combs. As expected, Diddy's lawyers denied the allegations, saying, This last minute lawsuit is an example of how a well intentioned law can be turned on its head. Miss Dickerson's 32 year old story is made up and not credible. Mr. Combs never and she implicates companies that did not exist. This is purely a money grab and nothing more. The other woman, Jane Doe, claimed that Diddy and singer Aaron Hall allegedly SA'd her and her friend back in the day. According to the reports, while at Hall's apartment, Jane Doe was offered more drinks and was coerced into being intimate with Combs. After Combs finished doing his business, Jane Doe laid in the bed, shocked and traumatized. While Jane Doe was trying to get dressed, Hall allegedly barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced Jane Doe to be intimate with him. But it looks like it was even 
worse than that because according to reports, Diddy and Aaron then took turns to SA her friend at the same time. It didn't end there because allegedly, days later, Combs went to the home where Jane Doe and her friend were staying, became irate, and allegedly a and choked Jane Doe until she passed out. Combs was allegedly looking for the friend because he feared that she would tell the girl he was with at the time. Now Diddy denied this and his lawyer denied it, saying, because of Mr. Combs' fame and success, he is an easy target for anonymous accusers who lie without conscience or consequence for financial benefit. The New York legislature surely did not intend or expect the Adult Survivors Act to be exploited by scammers. The public should be skeptical and not rush to accept these bogus allegations. But then the next thing we knew, Diddy started to get dropped by everyone that he was working and affiliated with. Macy's released a statement saying, as part of our ongoing review of our brand portfolio, the Sean John collection has started to phase out of assortment since early fall 2023. Diddy's products are being removed and won't be available on the site. It's the course of business. Retail stores are always evaluating and deciding what's relevant to consumers. Insiders also started to report that he was getting banned from the Grammys, saying several Academy officials are pushing to remove the billionaire superstar from the Grammy guest list. Their formal invitations go out this month. There's conflict at the Academy as several voting members do not think it will be appropriate to invite Diddy. Some, including several high-profile African-American members, fear that inviting him sends the wrong message to audiences and the charities it supports. Several publicists have asked that their artists aren't seated by him. It's a logistical nightmare. But things got insane when even his own company, Revo TV, announced that Diddy has been asked to step down from his role as chairman of the company. They released a statement that said, Sean Combs has stepped down from his position as chairman of Revolt. While Mr. Combs has previously had no operational or day-to-day -day role in the business, this decision helps to ensure that Revolt remains steadfastly focused on our mission to create meaningful content for the culture and amplify the voices of black people throughout this country and African diaspora. They continue, our focus has always been one that reflects our commitment to the collective journey of Revolt, one that is not driven by any individual, but by the shared efforts and values of our entire team on behalf of advancing, elevating, and championing our culture. And that continues. Well, at this point, Diddy was reportedly becoming very desperate to redirect all the negative attention away from him. And he was desperate enough to shift the attention towards someone else. Now, y'all remember how the former president of Bad Boy Records got exposed and sued for SA last week? Well, allegedly, Diddy was behind that leak because he wanted people to focus on somebody else. According to reports, the lawsuit filed in New York Supreme Court accused is Harvey Pierre, a former president of Bad Boy Entertainment and Bad Boy Records, of engaging in a year-long pattern of grooming the unnamed assistant, leading to SH of plaintiff in SA. From approximately 2016 to 2017, Pierre essayed plaintiff on multiple occasions in New York City and other locations throughout the country. However, a representative of the company released a statement saying, the allegations are from many years ago that were never brought to the attention of the company. Neither the plaintiff nor the executive or current employees of the company. We are now investigating the allegations and our top priority is the safety and well-being of our employees. Well, that didn't get that much attention because people stopped talking about it. So Diddy is allegedly trying to expose somebody else and that's none other than Chris Stokes. Now, I'm not gonna lie. If there was gonna be some sacrificing going on, Chris might be the perfect option to sacrifice because he's been getting a side day for a long time in Hollywood. I mean, he has been rumored to have harbored a runaway girl when she was only 15 and still a minor. Yes, I'm talking about Marcus Houston's wife, Mia. According to sources, Miana Dickey was reported missing by her adoptive parents in August 2016, aged 15. It was believed that she traveled to her birth mother, who had lost custody back in 2012. Mia kind of just went radio silent between 2016 and 2018. But one weird thing about this whole case is that during those years when she was missing, she was credited as an art director for several of Chris Stokes movies that spanned from 2016 to 2018. The story that Chris and his people told was that Mia was close friends with Chris Stokes' daughter Chrissy and they were so close that they were like sisters and Chris was like a father to her. This still doesn't explain why or how they were with a minor who was legally classified as missing and people believe that they had helped 
Marcus hide Mia from the public until she turned 18 and they married her off to a 38 year old man. But let's not forget that Chris Stokes himself has an essay allegation against him by B2K member Raz B, who used to be managed by Chris. Raz B even went live a couple of months ago where he got into it with Chris and he said that he didn't feel safe. I don't feel safe, I'm in Kansas City, I'm at the Hilton Hotel. And I'm telling everybody right now, Rasby does not feel safe. Pull out an APB for Rasby in Kansas City. I don't feel safe. Chris could be the perfect choice for Diddy to serve up. And according to this blind item, that's exactly what Diddy is doing. The mogul slash wannabe rapper wants some of the pressure off of him, so is dropping names of other predators. First up is the record executive from the South and his group. The group's include a Y2K boy band and one of Ariana Grande's love rivals and her sister. Well, unsurprisingly, Chris is not here for Diddy trying to expose him like this. And according to insiders, he thinks that Diddy is being selfish by trying to throw him under the bus to save himself. He thinks that Diddy is crossing a line here and he is being disloyal despite their 20 years of friendship. And according to another insider, Chris is also threatening to expose even more secrets about Diddy. If Diddy tries to set him up, he has some major dirt on Diddy and he's threatening to expose that dirt. So yeah, things could get even messier.